15, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, go for main engine start, main engine start, 2, 1, booster ignition, and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery, returning to the space station, paving the way for future missions beyond. Our modern rocket ships allow us to overcome the bonds of gravity and reach unexplored frontiers. Space exploration is symbolic of our culture's enormous interest in scientific progress and deeply permeates our lives. Children dream of becoming astronauts. Scientists contemplate manned missions to Mars. Our 3,000 operational satellites allow us to view detailed maps of the Earth, talk on cell phones, and watch hundreds of TV channels. We value space so much that NASA's 2009 budget is $17.3 billion. It is clear to me that if humanity survives the next century, the next several centuries, that it will need more room than can be afforded by the planet Earth, and that NASA or whatever becomes of NASA will be the uh, will be the agency that guarantees the survival of the human race. But how are we able to escape Earth's atmosphere and journey into the great unknown? The story of space exploration begins in 1642 Lincolnshire, England, at the height of the scientific revolution. There, the great physicist Isaac Newton was born. Newton's ideas are the foundation for modern space travel, paving the way for all our expeditions beyond Earth's boundaries. As a child, Newton spent much of his time tinkering with mechanical objects. He built miniature windmills, sundials, and clocks rather than socializing with his peers. At age 12, Newton became interested in the nature of the cosmos. He was especially intrigued by math and the causes of motion. In 1661, Newton went to Cambridge University. There, Newton continued to probe his childhood passions for math and science, but he was unsatisfied with current mathematical knowledge. What if X was constantly changing? There was no way to calculate constantly changing values, so Isaac Newton invented one, calculus. Calculus is all about how things change, and whenever anything moves, that's changing something, it's changing position. And so uh, Newton essentially invented calculus to solve the problem of uh, coming up with the moon's orbit. Not only did Newton use calculus for much of his later work, it is directly influential for space travel today. Calculus is necessary to figure out a spaceship's non-uniform acceleration, orbital period, and rotation necessary to simulate Earth's gravity. If you were going to try to send a rocket off to, uh, to you know, hit some asteroid or something, calculus would be behind all the calculations you'd use to, to figure out how fast it had to go, what direction it had to go, when it should be launched, all those things. By age 22, Newton had invented an entire branch of mathematics, but no one knew. Instead, he preferred solitary study and refused to publish his work. He returned to the familiar environment of Cambridge, becoming a lecturer in 1667, although few could follow his lectures. Newton's unpopularity with his students gave him more time to work on motion and mechanics. From 1685 to 1687, Newton did little but calculate. The result was the greatest scientific treatise ever written the Philosophi Naturalis Principia Mathematica. The Principia included Newton's three laws of motion and the law of universal gravitation. These laws are vital to our modern understanding of physics and continue to hold true today in all normal conditions. Newton's book revolutionized science with its principle that all motion follows the same laws, even in space. Newton destroyed Aristotle's view that an object's elemental composition determined how it moved. Motion in space worked just like that on Earth. All motion in the universe could theoretically be predicted with Newton's new ideas, supporting scientific revolutionary René Descartes' view of the universe as an elaborate clockwork machine. Isaac Newton continued the work of scientists like Copernicus and Galileo with his revolutionary book. He said, If I have seen further, it is only by standing on the shoulders of giants. But Newton himself was profoundly influential to science. He instilled a belief in reason in the thinkers of the time that would lead to the Enlightenment's principle of using natural laws to understand humanity. Since Newton pulled all of this physics and astronomy together into one grand system, uh, people thought that was a great ideal for the way of, of, of doing science generally. Fellow scientist Edmund Haley wrote of Newton in the book's preface, Nearer the gods no mortal may approach. 
practical everyday life, in other words, the life of most people most of the time, Newton's laws govern all experience, all motion. Newton's first law states that an object will continue in its state of rest, or constant motion, unless acted on by an outside net force. This principle is demonstrated by an astronaut in space, far enough from any large bodies that all gravitational forces are negligible. If the astronaut throws a wrench, it will continue in a straight line forever, unless it encounters another force. With the first law, scientists are able to understand the fundamental cause of motion and properly operate without gravity. Without an understanding of the first law, an astronaut is helpless when working in space. Newton's second law states that net force equals mass times acceleration. The second law is the basis for nearly all physics calculations. Without it, scientists could not figure out the amount of force needed to accelerate rockets into space, or even build rockets at all. The second law allowed people to calculate how hard it would be to launch rockets. Newton's third law states that forces come in pairs. Each force is balanced by another equal and opposite force. The third law is the basis for launching rockets. The push on the rocket's exhaust gases creates an equal and opposite force that propels the rocket upward. But the Principia's contribution to space travel does not end with the three laws. Newton also calculated the very force that keeps us bound to Earth. While scientists had long suspected the equation of gravity, they were unable to prove it. The story of Isaac Newton's discovery of the law of universal gravitation is legendary. In 1665, as the bubonic plague ravaged England, Newton moved back to the country to avoid infection. There, as he did much of the ceaseless thinking that led to the Principia, he is said to have seen an apple fall and realized that the moon was held in orbit by the same force that made an apple fall to Earth. After he realized that gravity worked even in space, he designed a thought experiment to demonstrate how to overcome its effects. Newton imagined a cannon on the top of a mountain. A cannonball it fired would travel a certain distance before crashing to Earth. If the cannon were somehow able to fire the ball fast enough, it would be able to travel around the Earth. If fired even faster, it would escape the Earth's gravitational pull completely. Without the exact law of universal gravitation, scientists would not be able to calculate how to make it into orbit and out of the Earth's gravitational pull. Scientists must take the gravity of all large celestial bodies into account to make accurate calculations for the flight path of spaceships. And um, so with the law of universal gravitation, he shows how you can basically get the results of Galileo's physics and the results of Kepler's astronomy um, from the law of universal gravitation. So, he, so he's building on what his predecessors have done, and he brings it all together into one grand piece. By discovering the nature of the bonds that tie us to Earth, Newton was able to overcome them. Newton's work paved the way for the enlightenment of the 17th and 18th centuries by demonstrating that reason can unite multiple facets of life. His laws are used by modern scientists every day. They are the basis for all subsequent work in physics, faltering only in theoretical and extreme examples which are of little relevance to space exploration. Even Albert Einstein, who came up with the theories of relativity that create exceptions to Newton's laws, acknowledged his enormous impact. Einstein said of his hero Newton, The concepts that you created are even today still guiding over our thinking in physics. Um, if you want to make a moonshot, your calculations are mostly involving Newtonian physics. You don't have to bring in all these other complicated uh, uh, elements of, of relativity theory. Without Isaac Newton, we would be forever grounded, watching the stars but unable to reach them. Our children would not dream of escaping gravity's grip. They would not even know how gravity held them bound. With Isaac Newton's ideas, we can send satellites around the globe and astronauts far beyond it. From its humble beginnings in Lincolnshire, the space program has made incredible gains, and it is difficult to imagine life without it. Michael, you guys are up there, and uh, he said, who's driving? That's a good question. I think Isaac Newton is doing most of the driving right now.